This jig was made specifically for surfacing and flattening these reclaimed Oregon or Douglas fir boards using the table saw because at the time I didn't have a jointer or thicknesser and because I had to mill 56 of these boards for a giant outdoor table build, it was definitely needed. The first parts of the jig to cut out were the sides and base from 16mm MDF. Next, I needed to cut the two rails for the centre slider to run along. These were cut at a 45 degree angle on one side. The rails get screwed down with the bevel facing down, so I clamped a straight edge to the base and lined up the first rail to drill pilot holes through it and into the base, and then drilled the holes in the rail larger as clearance holes for the screws. I added masking tape to the bevel of the runner where the slider runs along so it didn't get any glue on it. I then glued and screwed it into place. I then cut out the base of the slider with 45 degree bevels on both sides. and use that to set the second rail in place. First to mark out the position of the screw holes and then to actually fix it in place. With the two rails in place, I could run the base through the table saw and flush up both edges. Perfect. Next step was to attach the two sides to the base, making sure to drill pilot holes before gluing and screwing them in place. Then I installed an end piece to tie the two sides together and ensure that they remain square to the base and parallel to each other. The slider was going to be moved back and forth with a long threaded rod, so the vertical piece needed to have two threaded inserts fitted to it. I laminated two pieces of 12mm MDF together to get the thickness I needed. To stop any deflection in that piece, I'm going to add these right angle supports when I fix it to the base of the slider. Even though I drilled pilot holes in these pieces, they were just too small to avoid splitting. So I replaced them with solid wood supports that I left square. And that was the slider done, and sliding very nicely. Next thing to do was to drill a hole in the centre of this piece and install a threaded insert into both faces. 
This is so the threaded rod is able to both push and pull the slider without an insert being forced out. This end of the jig is where the threaded rod will be captured so it can be spun with a socket in the battery drill. So it'll need some kind of a bush inserted. I made my own steel bush by drilling out a threaded insert to the same diameter as the threaded rod. The end of the threaded rod was captured in the end of the jig by two nuts jammed together either side of the bush with just enough clearance to allow it to spin freely. I added rows of screws from the back side of the slider and the opposite end cap so that only the points were protruding into the jig. This was to hold the boards very securely so there was no chance of them moving. Lastly, I needed to cap off the end of the jig that was still open and I made this end piece with a cutout in it so that the slider could be retracted all the way to the end of the jig, as you can see here. To use the jig, Equal sized spaces are placed inside to raise the board so that the lowest point on the face is slightly higher than the top edge of the jig. The board is then secured in place. And then it's run through the table saw. This was the first time using the jig, so I ran it through a few times raising the blade until I cut away all the waste. But depending on the size of your blade and the width of the board, it could be done in only one pass for thin boards or two passes by cutting just above halfway on each pass. The finish on this board was perfect. The jig performed so well. Now with the board clamped in the jig with the milled face down, the edge of the board can be milled flat and square because the jig is square. Pretty good. To mill the opposite face of the board parallel to the first is the same process as before. You just need to use slightly longer spaces to raise the face above the jig. To mill the opposite edge of the board, it's just run through the table saw because you now have a straight edge to put up against the fence. And here is a comparison of rough sawn boards against freshly milled boards. After using the jig a few times, I realised that I could also use it with my router. My router has a large base plate on it to fit into the router table. And that plate allows the router to sit on top of the jig with plenty of movement left to right and front to back. The setup for the router is different though. The board needs to sit slightly below the top of the jig because that's the surface the router rests on. To do this, I place a couple of spacers on a flat surface. These are three millimeter MDF and then place the board on those. I then even out any wobble in the board with smaller shims. I'm gonna put one under this side here. I'll put one under this side here. And see, I've taken that out completely and place the jig upside down over the board and tighten it up. This results in the board being recessed and level in the jig. With a straight bit in the router, or any flat bottom bit, the depth is set to the lowest point on the face of the board 
and away you go. Lock it in place. To mill the opposite face, just repeat the setup process, just with the two 3 mil spacers on the flat surface, no need for the thinner shims. This way is a bit slower than the table saw, but the finish from the router method was far better than the table saw method.